welcome seventh grade it's me again uh, today we are going to look at lesson 10 counting counting with variables so we're going to start with number one number one is a prediction and you are going to read make a prediction what will happen after typing a um, number into the prompt and I'm looking at it it says make new right prompt user enter number and count when count so what's going to happen is the program will make that many new sprouts right so i'm going to type in hit hit run type in 10 check it and then we have 10 carrots in the scene so the answer would be c Number two, and number two, I was rushing through this when I did it originally, and it doesn't let me reset. So it says, uh, make news fright, it's at count, the bunny's gonna say count for five seconds, so it's gonna uh, say five. The answer will be A, it says five, you see it there, and I'm gonna hit finish. Okay, number three. And on most of these, I have to go back through and start new. <sighs> Excuse me, I'm sleepy. So in number three, it says you can have... Um, Oops, I'm going to pull it down. Drag a set block into the workspace connected under when run. Change the question marks to count or another label. Make the bunny say the number that is stored in the variable. So I am looking and I'm going to go in to the variables and I'm going to pull out this block, the question mark. And I'm going to click it under there and I'm going to set it to count. And I'm going to go back into sprites, and I'm going to pull that out, out, click that underneath, go back in the variables, I'm going to get the one that says count, so when I click it should say the number zero, see? right there, number zero, and that is that one. Please remember that you can, at any time, pause the video, do the work, and restart the video. Thank you. I'm going to go to number four. Starting. <clears throat> okay, so a variable stored in a, a value stored in a variable can change over time. Let's put a program that uses the same variable multiple times. So it says um, this block adds another number to the stored the value stored in the variable it only works when the variable is used to store a number do this connect a change by so i'm going to pull this one out under the event block uh, we are going to change it to count and then connect say count so I'm going to go back in this point say count at four seconds so it should it should change at four seconds right it's going to say zero and then at four seconds it should say one boink oh see see what I didn't do I didn't change this sprite to be matching the purple one or the brown one. So 
see now the all now all the bunnies are the same color. It take four seconds. It turned to one, and that's that. That so that's true of any time we're doing um, sprites. They all have to be the same. Okay, I mean, we could change it to anyone we want. Uh, I could change it to the elephant. And then hit reset and run, and it's going to do the same thing. <laughs> Additionally, if you ever really mess up and you and you want want to just start over that level, you come over here where it says version history. Go down to where it says start over. Then click over to make sure they confirm that you really do want to start over. Okay. This program makes the sprite say the value of the count each time it is clicked. But the sprite is saying the same number each time. What block can you add to the program to make this sprite say a different number each time it is clicked? Make your program change the value of the variable each time this sprite is clicked. Press run. So number five should all we're going to do is go into variables and we're going to put this purple variable change count by one. So I'm going to hit run, and I'm going to click it, and it should be counting up every time I click. Okay. So all I did was bring out that purple variable that says change question mark by one, and then then you change the change it to say count. All right, number six. Once again, I'm going into my version history. And I want to bring all these events up. I, I think I've mentioned that before. Whenever I'm doing, when I have multiple events. I like to pull them all up so I can see where they're at. See, see so I can see them all up in the game. Um, so it says in the second half of the lesson, you will create a clicker game. The others that can play uh, that others can play in the clicker games. The scorer use points by clicking sprites to remove them. The code here is an example of a finished game like you might build. You will be able to choose different sprite costume and customize the rules of the game. Okay, so this one, uh, what you're going to do, you're going to hit, hit, um, start, run, and then you start clicking on the, the carrots. Game over, you score 12 points. So it tells me that down here. And this was just more like an example of what you're going to be building. Now the rest of these games are, um, if you look right where I'm circling on the board, it has a link. So that means whatever we do on 7 is going to show up in 10. So we got to be careful that we do not start over here. So this one says, are you going to make a game? The user will click sprites quickly to score as many points as they can. To start, let's create a group of sprites. So, please follow along. I want you to do it a specific way. So, we are going to make 25 sprites. And if you see over here, it makes 25 sprites. We are going to change the sprite size. So, we're going to set size to something smaller, about 50. It also says we can set a background. So we're going to put that background first. 
Uh, you can choose any background that's here. I'll do. I'm gonna do something. I don't know, bluish. It didn't change. Oh, there we are. And now I have a blue background. And hit run. And that's it for that one. That's a pretty simple level to start with. Three more to go. Now this one says in this game we will remove sprites when they are clicked. The user will click sprites quickly to score as many points as they can. So we're going to go into events. Pull that out. Uh, and then we are going to go to, let me double check, remove, where it says remove. Then we have to add what, what, what we're clicking. So click on that plus arrow. Put it there. And then you're going to hit run and start clicking. And you should see them disappearing. And that's that one. Again, stop the video, do the work, and then come back. We're moving on to number nine. Again, I like to put my stuff together. Okay, you need to keep track of the player score. Let's use a variable to do things. To <coughs> do two things. Set the score to zero at the beginning of the game. Give a point each time. So we are going to put variable set uh, um, right here, the top one, set score to zero. Then we're going to back in the variables, change score by one. Hit run, start clicking games. And that's that. And then finally, the last one we're going to do today. Like this is the same as we just did. So we want to. Um, the game is going to come to an end, and enough time has passed. We can end the game by printing the player's final score. So we are going to pull out events at, let's just leave it at 10 seconds. You can make it longer if you want to. Um, and then we're going to go to world print. And I'm going to pull this out. And we're going to put the variable score right here. Then hit run. Click a few. Game's gonna end in ten seconds. If you want to try to click them all, you can. Then it has seventeen up there. See? And that's it. That's that's all the race to this one. Really quite straightforward. Thank you for your time. See you uh, next time we meet.